<clears throat> okay, so today being the disappearance day of uh, Sripad Madhavendra Puri, uh, we're going to sing the song written by Narottam Das Thakur. All three of us will sing. <laughs> All four of us now. Jaya Nilo Premadhana Koruna Prochur Koruna Jaya Nilo Prima Dhana Koruna Prochur Heno Prabhu Kotha Gila Cha Jothakur Heno Prabhu Kotha Gila charge or takur. Kaha mora sharu prupa. Kaha shonatan Kaha dasa raghu nata pati topaban Kaha mora bata juga Kaha kobiraj Eko kale kota Gila Gura Nataraj Pashane Kutibo Matha Onole Poshibo Goranga Gunero Nidhi Kota Gele Pabo Sheshaba Shangira Shange Jekoilo Bilash Sheshaba Shangira Shange Jekoilo Bilash Jekoilo 
शेषंगा पाया कांदे नरोतम दास शेषंग पाया कांदे नरो तम दास जयानीलो प्रेम धन करुणा प्रचु जयानीलो प्रेम धन करुणा प्रचु नो प्रभु को था गीला चार जो ठाकुर हरे कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा Krishna Krishna Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare 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 Krishna Hare Krishna Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. He who brought the treasure of divine love and who was filled with compassion and mercy. Where has such a personality as Srinivas Acharya gone? Where are my Swarup Damodar and Rupa Goswami? Where is Sanatan? Where is Raghunath Das, the savior of the fallen? Where are my Raghunath Bhatta and Gopal Bhatta? And where is Krishna Das Kaviraj? Where did Lord Gauranga, the great dancer, suddenly go? I will smash my head against a rock and enter into fire. Where will I find Lord Gauranga, the reservoir of all wonderful qualities? Being unable to obtain the association of Lord Gauranga, accompanied by all of these devotees in whose association he performed his pastimes, Narottam Das simply weeps. So I will talk about Madhavendra Puri um, in light of this verse in Bhagavatam. So we'll just chant the verse and then we'll see if we can naturally talk about Madhavendra Puri. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Hari Hari Sarveshu Bhuteshu Bhagavan Asta Ishvara Iti Bhutani Manasa Kamais Tai Sadhu Manayet Hari Sarveshu Bhuteshu Bhagavan Asta Ishvara 
इति भूतानि मनसा कामस्त साधु मानेत हरिशुभूतेषु भगवान्स्तर यदि भूता मनसा कामस्त साधु मानेत हरिशु भूतेषु भगवान्स्तर यदि भूता मनसा कामस्त साधु मानेत इति भूतानि मनसा कामेस्ते हे साधु मानये हरि सर्वेशु भूतेशु भगवान आस्त ईश्वर इति भूतानि मनसा कमाय साधु मानये हरि द सुप्रीम पर्सनालिटी ऑफ गॉडहेड सर्वेशु इन ऑल भूतेशु लिविंग एंटिटीज Bhagavan the supreme personality aste is situated ishwara the supreme controller iti thus bhutani all living entities manasa by such understanding kamaihi by desires taihi those sadhu manayet one should highly esteem translation and commentary by his divine grace ac bhakti vedanta swami shila prabhupad one should always remember the transcendental sorry one should always remember the supreme personality of god in his localized representation as the paramatma who is situated in the core of every living entity's heart thus one should offer respect to every living entity according to that living entity's position or manifestation purport Hari Sarveshu Bhuteshu this statement is sometimes misunderstood by the unscrupulous persons who wrongly conclude that because Hari the supreme personality of God is situated in every living entity every living entity is therefore Hari such foolish persons do not distinguish between the atma and the paramatma who are situated in every body the atma is the living entity and the paramatma is the supreme personality of God the living entity sorry the individual living entity however is different from the paramatma the supreme lord therefore hari sarveshu bhuteshu means that hari is situated as paramatma not as atma although atma is a part of paramatma offering respect to every living entity means offering respect to the paramatma situated in every living entity one should not misunderstand every living entity to be the paramatma sometimes unscrupulous persons designate a living entity as dridra narayana swami narayana this narayana or that narayana one should clearly understand 
that although Narayana is situated in the core, of the heart of every living entity, the living entity never becomes Narayana. Om Ajnana Timirandasya Ajnana Anjana Shalakaya Chakshurun Militam Yena Tasmai Shri Gurave Namaha Shri Chaitanya Manobhishtam Sthapitam Yena Bhutale Svayam Rupa Kadamahyam Dadati Svapadantikam Vandeham Shri Guru Shri Yutapadakamalam Shri Gurun Vaishnavam Shcha Shri Rupam Sagrajatam Sahagrana Rugunatan Vitam Tam Sajivam Sadvaitam Savadhutam Parijana Sahitam Krishna Chaitanya Devam Shri Radha Krishna Padan Sahagana Lalita Shri Vishakan Vitamscha Vancha Kalpaturubyash Chakrapa Sindhubyevacha Patitanam Pavane Bhyo Vaishnava Bhyo Namon Mahajai Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhunityananda Shri Advaita Gadavra Shri Vasadi Gora Bhaktavrinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare 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 Sarve Shubhute Shubhagavan Asti Ishvara Iti Bhutani Manasa Kama Iste Sadhu Mana Yet So uh, a lot of these points uh, Srila Prabhupada makes in the purport are points that he made often in fact uh, many of these points you could say are kind of like the heartbeat of Srila Prabhupada's books and especially uh, following in the footsteps of Sri Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur um, who definitely um, as um, yeah, as instructed by his father Sri, Sri, uh, Srila Bhakti Vinod Thakur that he should crush all of the uh, sahajyas and impersonalists by preaching pure devotional service. So Srila Prabhupada in the same way, Namaste Saraswati Deve, is very dear to Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur. Gauravani Pracharine Nirvishesha Shunyavadi Paschate Deshatarine. He, uh, by preaching Gauravani, by preaching the um, instructions of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, the teachings of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, he freed the Western lands from impersonalism and uh, voidism. So in this purport, Srila Prabhupada is um, doing that. He's commenting on the fact that some people misunderstand the injunction to offer respects to every living entity um, because the Paramatma is situated within them to mean that one should offer respect to every living entity because they themselves are the Paramatma. For instance, in the Mayavadi Sampradayas, they offer, when they meet each other, they say, Om Namo Narayanaya, offering respects to Narayana, who is standing before me now as my friend or my uncle or whatever, my fellow sannyasi, whoever it might be. But the Vaishnavas, uh, the Vaishnavas also say, Om Namo Narayanaya, especially this is prominent within the Sri Sampradaya in Tamil Nadu and well, South India in general. But Om Namo Narayanaya doesn't mean offering obeisances to uh, this person in front of me who is Narayana. But uh, it means offering obeisances to Narayana, as Srila Prabhupada says, who is situated within the heart of every living entity. Krishna says, um, Ishvara Sarvabhutanam Hriddesherjana Tishtati Brahma and Sarvabhutani Yantra Rudhani Maya Yeah, Krishna's the uh, controller of all living entities and he's he's situated within the heart he stands within the heart of all living entities guiding them as Paramatma throughout their sojourn in the material world so many of these points again have been made time and time again and um, I think most of the devotees in this crowd know how to um, counter those points Daridra Narayana Narayana never becomes poor. Narayana is never impoverished. Poor people um, aren't Narayana. Swami Narayana, I think this is referring to a Gujarati, so-called Vaishnava Sampradaya, um, whose founder be later became known as uh, Swami Narayana. Uh, well, literally means he actually... He himself uh, wasn't claiming that, but he uh, 
later his followers, he wrote one book called Vachanamrita, which is uh, kind of like the essence of Vedic instruction. And I haven't read it, but um, yeah, my understanding is that, and, and it seems Srila Prabhupada's understanding of Swami Narayan was also that he never himself claimed to be God, but later his followers kind of imposed that upon him. So that's that. So this Narayan or that Narayan is so many uh, conceptions people have. But spiritual life, there's a, there's a verse in the Upanishads. Uttishta jagrata prapya varani bhuta takshura siddhara nishita durati durgam patastat kavayo vadanti that spiritual life, Uttishta jagrata prapya varani bhuta, it's enjoining the living entities, wake up, get up, Uttishta, Uttishta jagrata prapya varani bhuta, and uh, acquire that which is, or strive to acquire that which is um, the highest goal. Uttishta jagrata prapya varani bhuta, akshura siddhara nishita duratiya. Spiritual life, it's, it's like a razor's edge. Durgam patastat kavayovadanti. And the kavis, the intelligent people, they say that it's durgam pata. It's a, it's a difficult path. Now, why is it a difficult path? Why is it a difficult path? Why is it like a razor's edge? A basic philosophical understanding that we have, and that many people have, most sane people have, is that truth exists. There's some kind of truth. And that truth is uh, not just my truth and your truth and um, that, okay, you know, you believe everybody's God and that's great. You should think that. And uh, we, we don't have the same idea, um, but, you know, we're, it's, it's, that's your truth and my truth. And we just kind of, this is a common thing, especially within spiritual circles nowadays, that you have your truth and I have my truth. And it's whatever works, whatever works for you. But if somebody's sincere, if somebody's serious about actually finding out the purpose of life, if somebody actually accepts that truth exists, then this conception is really just not, not a very intelligent one. And one should uh, wholeheartedly actually reject this conception, that there's your truth and my truth, and that it's whatever works for you and whatever works for me. Because if there is truth, then that truth is one thing. Um, there's one truth, there's not two truths, or three truths, or four truths. There's one truth, and that truth is just one thing. And it's not that every single conflicting idea or contradictory idea is true, and somehow or other it's all true, and we just don't know how it is. No. Uh, the sky is not blue and red at the same time. So there is truth, and that truth um, can be understood but why uh, so so why is it like a razor's edge because the truth is one thing the truth is one thing therefore spiritual life is like a razor's edge you have to get it right it's not that you can go that that I'll be a, I'll be a vaishnava and then I'll also accept I'll I'll accept krishna consciousness wholeheartedly and then I also accept buddhism wholeheartedly or I ex and I accept Christianity wholeheartedly, and, and it's all the same. Like you see these stickers, coexist. Now it's fine, coexist is a good thing. We should, should tolerate each other um, in the sense that we shouldn't kill each other. But at the same time, truth is truth, and truth needs to be propagated. And, and not just propagated, but understood. So spiritual life is like a razor's edge because one should get it right. One should stick to one path and get it right. So... This requires intelligence. People come up with all kinds of ideas because they think that spirituality or spiritual life doesn't require any intelligence, that it's beyond the intelligence, it's transcendental. And therefore, intelligence is just a, it's a, it's a mundane thing. It's something that you don't need to use for spiritual life. And we see even very intelligent people, extremely intelligent people, have all these stupid, completely stupid nonsense ideas about spiritual life. It's like, you have very intelligent people, very cultured, intelligent people, and then when it comes to spiritual life, they just turn their brains off. Because it, it must be something ethereal and, 
and uh, and, and unimaginable and this and that. It, it, it must, therefore, I turn my brain off completely. My brain, my, my brain can, and it's true. Atashri Krishna nama nina bhavet grahimindriya. We can't grasp Krishna with our senses. We can't grasp Krishna with our intelligence. However, there is such a thing as theology and philosophy, which are two words that I like very much. Uh, theology, theo meaning uh, God, and logos meaning logic, the logic of God. Theology and philosophy, philo meaning love and sophie meaning truth. Philosophy means the love of truth. It's a good word. Um, so we should be both of these things. We should be theologians. We should approach uh, God with logic. God can't be uh, grasped by logic or conquered by logic, but he can be approached by logic. And we should also be philosophers in the sense that we should not just think about logic and this and that, but we should actually have a, we should do it out of love. We should have a love for truth. We should have a yearning for truth. And, and, and by that yearning to understand that truth, then that truth can become revealed to us. So how do we develop intelligence in spiritual life? One thing is that lust destroys intelligence. Sense gratification, lust for sense gratification destroys intelligence. Therefore, Krishna says in Bhagavad Gita, he says, Yada samharate chayam kurmongani vasarvashaha indriya nindriya tebhyas tasya pragnya pratishtita. He says that, well, actually, I should first define tasya pragnya pratishtita. That one, he's, one, one becomes established in uh, sthita pragnya. Krishna defines this term in the second chapter. Prajahati adakaman sarvan parthamanogatan. Um, sarvan parthamanogatan. Atmani evatmanatushta stita pragnasta dochite. Thank you. Atmani evatmanatushta stita pragnasta dochite. So, who is a stita pragna? Who is, who is situated in transcendental knowledge? Who is transcendentally intelligent? Prajahati adakaman. One who gives up. Lust for sense gratification. This is the first thing Krishna says. One who gives up lust for sense gratification. And sarvan partha manogatan. And gives up mental speculation. Gets off the mental platform. Sarvan partha manogatan. Atmanye vatmana tushta. And then takes shelter or, 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 or takes their happiness um, as or. Their happiness comes from within. The, their happiness, they, they experience the happiness of the Atma. Atma Nyeva Atma Natusha, and they're satisfied. And then Stitta Pragna Stodochite. One, one who is like this is Stitta Pragna. So the first thing is that one should give up lust for sense gratification. Then two verses later, Krishna says, Yada asam harate jayam kurmongani eva sarvashaha indriyan indriyarte bhyas Stitta Pragna, or, uh, yeah, Tasya Pragna Pratishtata that just like a turtle draws in, he can, he can go completely into his shell, his head, his legs, everything. He can draw himself into his shell. Similarly, one who is pragna pratishtata, one who is situated in transcendental intelligence, should be able to withdraw the senses from the sense objects. Like that, like a turtle. Just indriyani indriyartebhyas tasya pragna pratishtata. He just draws in his senses. Like that. Is able... Able to, to detach himself from the senses. But that's very difficult. It's not, it's, not, it's not so easy. Therefore, the next verse, Krishna says, Vishyavani vartate nirahara sedehina rasavarajam rasopiasya param drishtva nivartate. That in order to be able to do that, one needs a higher taste. Vishyavani vartate nirahara sedehina rasavarajam rasopiasya param drishtva nivartate. Because Without a higher taste, it's very difficult to control the senses. Next verse, Krishna says. Uh, next verse, Krishna says. Uh, yeah, yatato hyapikonteya, purusha seve bhaschitaha, indriyani pramatini, haranti prasabhammana. That the 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 senses are so strong. 
that even purusha seva bashita yetato actually yeah yetato he become the purusha seva bashita even a very intelligent person a very intelligent very cultured person who's actually not just intelligent and not just cultured but who's actually specifically trying to control the senses even such a person indriyani pramatini the senses are so mad so crazy that haranti prasabhamana that they're by force they can steal away his mind so therefore how 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 are the senses controlled tani is this next verse tani sarvani samyamya yukta asita matparaha krishna says that those senses should be controlled how yukta asita matparaha by being engaged in my service and then he says um yukta asita what is Uh, yeah, but shey he uh, yes, Indriyani. Yes, Indriyani. One one whose senses are 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 thus subordinated, then tasya pragnya pratishtata. Then he's situated in transcendental knowledge. Otherwise, dhyayato vishyam pumsa sangaste shu bhajayate sangat sanjayate kama kama krodhi bhajayate. If if one doesn't do this, if one doesn't control the senses, then what happens? Then this is how lust destroys intelligence. Dhyayato vishram pumsa. If a man, if a person meditates on the objects of the senses, sanga steshu bhajayate, then what happens? Sanga comes, attachment comes. Sangat sanjayate kama. Then from attachment, lust comes. If one becomes attached to the object of the senses, then he just wants more and more and more. Sangat sanjayate kama. Kama krodho bhajayate. Lust is something that 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 cannot be satisfied. whatsoever so therefore one who one who is lusty one who indulges their lust inevitably becomes angry krodad bhavati sammoha sammoha smriti vipramaha then from this anger his memory is bewildered his memory meaning that he he forgets what's right and wrong he forgets what should be done and what should not be done then smriti bramshad buddhi nasho then from his memory being gone then his intelligence goes he can't control himself at this point he's just like gone and then buddhi nashad pranashati then from that everything's finished then he then he be then he starts serving dridra narayana then he starts uh you know having all these nonsense ideas that 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 atman paramatma are one why because of lust that's why Now it may not be gross lust it may not be lust like like uh you know he wants to enjoy women and therefore he thinks that atman paramatma are the same but it's a subtle kind of lust lust is extremely subtle and uh and corrosive so um then then what should one do raga with raga dvesh mukta istu vishyan indriyeshtran atma vashe vidhe atma prasadam adhigachati Therefore, raga and dvesha, one should control. One should control their attachment. One should control aversion. Raja vimukta vimukta is to vishyan indriyeshan. One should then control the senses. Atma vashe vidhe atma prasadam adigachati. And for one who has done that, then the mercy of the Lord <coughs> of the Lord comes. Prasadam comes. And then, what's the result of that prasadam? The result of that prasad. Prasade sarva dukkhanam hani rasya pajayate. All of his suffering is finished. Hani rasya pajayate. Prasanna prasanna cheta so hyashu. Buddhi. Yes, thank you. Buddhi pariyavatishtate. Then, having achieved the, the the mercy of the Lord, having having. Um, all of his suffering been removed, he becomes very peaceful, and from this peace. then his intelligence becomes established so how how do we develop intelligence we develop intelligence prasanna cheta so hyashu specifically shila prabhupada says being satisfied in krishna consciousness krishna consciousness is has the ability to purify anything so by engaging the mind in krishna consciousness by engaging the intelligence in krishna consciousness then one can become satisfied uh and therefore and 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 therefore can know can actually truly know krishna in truth um there's a verse in the upanishads 
ನಾಯಮಾತ್ಮ ಪ್ರವಚನೇನ ಪ್ರವಚನೇನ ಲಭ್ಯ ನ ಮೇ ಧಯ ನ ಬಹುದಾಶ್ರತೇನ ದಟ್ ದಿ ಆಬ್ಸೂಟ್ ಟ್ರೂತ್ ಕ್ಯಾನ್ ಬಿ ಅಚೀವ್ಡ್ ಜಸ್ಟ್ ಬೈ ಸೀಯಿಂಗ್ ಓರ್ ನಾಯಮಾತ್ಮ ಪ್ರವಚನೇನ ಲಭ್ಯ ನ ಮೇ ಧಯ ನಾಟ್ ಬೈ ಯುರ್ ಇಂಟೆಲಿಜೆನ್ಸ್ ನ ಬಹುದಾಶ್ರತೇನ ನಾಟ್ ಬೈ ಹಿಯರಿಂಗ್ ಆಲ್ ಕೈಂಡ್ಸ್ ಆಫ್ ಡಿಫ್ರೆಂಟ್ ಪೀಪಲ್ ಯಮೈ ವೈಶ ವಿಡ್ತೈತೈನ ಲಭ್ಯ ತೇಷ ಆತ್ಮ ವಿವೃಣುತೈ ತನು ಸ್ವಾಂ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಅರ್ ಒನ್ ಅಚೀವ್ಸ್ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಒನ್ ಅಚೀವ್ಸ್ ನಾಲೆಜ್ ಆಫ್ ದಿ ಆಬ್ಸೂಟ್ ವನ್ ಹೀ ಇಸ್ ಚೋಸನ್ ಬೈ ದಿ ಆಬ್ಸೂಟ್ ವನ್ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಗಿವ್ಸ್ ಹಿಸ್ ಮರ್ಸಿ ಜಸ್ಟ್ ಲೈಕ್ ದಿಸ್ ಪ್ರಸಾದ ಸರ್ವದು ಖಾನಾಮ್ ಒನ್ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಗಿವ್ಸ್ ಹಿಸ್ ಮರ್ಸಿ ದೆನ್ ವಿ ಕೆನ್ ಅಂಡರ್ಸ್ಟ್ಯಾಂಡ್ ಎನ್ ಸೊ ಹೌ ಡು ವಿ ಗೆಟ್ ಕೃಷ್ಣಸ್ ಮರ್ಸಿ ವಿ ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಟು ಯುಟಿಲೈಸ್ ದಿ ಇಂಟೆಲಿಜೆನ್ಸ್ ಇನ್ ದ ಸರ್ವಿಸ್ ಆಫ್ ದ ಸ್ಪಿರಿಚುವಲ್ ಮಾಸ್ಟರ್ ದಿಸ್ ವರ್ಸ್ ತೃಣಾದಿ ಸುನೀಚೇನ ತೃರೋರಪಿ ಸಹಿಷ್ಣು ಮಾನಿನ ಮಾನದೇನ ಮಾನಿನ ಮಾನದೇನ ಕೀರ್ತನೀಯ ಸದಾ ಹರಿ ಭಕ್ತಿ ಸಿರಾಂತ ಸರ್ಸ್ ಬಟ್ ಇ ಟಾಕ್ ವಿತ್ ಸೆಸ್ ಸ್ಪೆಸಿಫಿಕ್ಲಿ ಅಂಡ್ ಶ್ರೀಲ ಪ್ರಾಪರ್ ಆಲ್ಸೋ ಮೆನ್ಷನ್ಸ್ ಇನ್ ದ ಬಾಗತಮ್ ದಟ್ ದ ಫರ್ಸ್ಟ್ ದಿಸ್ ಇಸ್ ದ ವೈ ಟು ನೋ ಎನಿಥಿಂಗ್ ಶ್ರೀಲ ಪ್ರಾಪರ್ ಸೆ ದಟ್ ಅಂಡರ್ಸ್ಟ್ಯಾಂಡಿಂಗ್ ಮೀನ್ಸ್ ಸ್ಟ್ಯಾಂಡಿಂಗ್ ಅಂಡರ್ ಸೊ ಇನ್ ಆರ್ಡರ್ ಟು ಅಂಡರ್ಸ್ಟ್ಯಾಂಡ್ ಎನಿಥಿಂಗ್ ವಿ ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಟು ಬಿ ವೆರಿ ಹಂಬಲ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಸೊ ದ ಫರ್ಸ್ಟ್ manifestation that humility should be toward the spiritual master veta tam somya tat sarvam tatvatas tadunu grahat bru yu snigdasya shishyasya kurva guhim apyuta and uh, also um actually I'll translate this first veta tam somya tat sarvam this is the sages at naimisharnya speaking to suta goswami they he said or they say to him that you know all of the confidential truths of the vedas veta tam somya tat saram tatvada stad anugrahat by the mercy of the spiritual master by the anugraha by the affection of your spiritual master and those guru bo guhyam apyuta means those gurus who are anointed with with secret knowledge guru bo guhyam apyuta and um from them that the bruyu think this is shishya to a to a sincere disciple to a humble disciple bruyu think this is shishya guru go him up with that then they they reveal all these secrets and this is this is what a what a real guru is somebody who reveals the there's a verse in the um in the manu samhita upaniyatu yashisham veda madhya vedam madhyapaya dvija that a guru isn't just somebody who gives the sacred thread and who who does the upanayana samskar veda madhya payet vija um sankalpam sarahasyam cha tama um tama charyam prachakshate that a guru is one who reveals sankalpam sarahasyam cha so a guru is somebody who reveals the secret the 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 confidential purport of the vedic literatures So today is the appearance or the disappearance day of Shripad Madhavendra Puri who did just that who is who is who is uh, a guru specifically like that in the sense that in the Madhva Sampradaya of which we are a uh descendant yeah descendant I guess of which yeah from which we descend um previously the um supreme lord was known to be narayana he was known as the supreme ashraya tattva but madhavendra puri was the the first in that line to introduce this idea that actually krishna is the ashraya tattva and not just krishna actually but shrimati radharani is the ashraya tattva that more came from chaitanya mahaprabhu actually but he definitely revealed that krishna is the ashraya tattva and not just that but that conjugal love with him conjugal uh, loving relationship with him is the highest attainment and not just any conjugal loving uh you know relationship with him but specifically these conjugal feelings in separation or the highest attainment so he he used to chant this verse ai dina they are they're not they mutra nath ka da ve loke se um hridayam tadaloka kataram daita bhramiti kim karom yaham 
This is a verse uh, which was spoken by spoken by Srimati Radharani when um, Krishna was in uh, Mathura, and he was saying it's 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 a uh, just for calling out in in in, anxi- or in distress, saying "Ayi dina de ardra na ta hey matura na ta kadavi loki se." do you have a poem for this verse? No. Okay, I thought maybe you did. But anyway, she's calling out in separation, saying, "What am I going to do? The Lord of my life is gone. You know, or what should I do? I'm just, what should I do?" So. Oh, interesting. I didn't. Re- I didn't know that actually. Hmm. Hmm. Ah, huh, yeah, yeah. Hmm. Can you use the microphone? I, I can repeat it. Anyway, he was he was saying that that it's a prayer which is actually directly uh, addressing Krishna, saying that. Aidina um, deyardranat. Hey, oh, oh, oh. Oh, you who are merciful to the fallen or, or who are affectionate to the fallen, dear Dina, dear Mathura Anatta, the, the Lord of Mathura, Kadava, when will I see you again? And, she, and she's saying, um, because of not seeing you, my, my heart is breaking. What should I do now? What should I do now? Kim So, Madhavendra Puri, he revealed this in the Madhva Sampradaya, the first one. And so he has a very uh, special place um, within our, our Sampradaya. He's a very special Acharya. And um, he was the spiritual master of Ishvara Puri, who was the spiritual master of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. So he was, um, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was his grand disciple. Amongst his other disciples were Advaita Acharya and Paramananda Puri and others, who, who Chaitanya Mahaprabhu respected very much. And he one of his one of the main things which um, is spoken about regarding uh, Madhavendra Puri is his establishment of the worship of Gopal or as it's as he's known now Srinathji who is now in Gujarat but originally was on top of Govardhan. So there's a whole pastime narrated in the in the Chaitanya Charitamrita about um, the establishment of the worship of Gopal, the first Anukut uh, ceremony festival. Uh, Madhavendra Puri also was ordered by Gopal to travel around and go beg sandalwood paste. At that time, he met Advaita Acharya and initiated him. He um, he also there's a whole uh, yeah pastime with Kirchor Gopinath, Gopinath who stole Kir from Madhavendra Puri. Um, so he's a very great devotee. Um, there's, you could probably, I mean, you could definitely, most definitely give a whole class, but those are some things I thought of in relation to this verse, especially about um, getting the right idea by, by serving a spiritual master who also has the right idea. So that's what I'll say, Hare Krishna, if there's any comments or questions. A little, a few comments on this verse, which uh, <laughs> I remember I was proofreading. I think it was chapter six of my Dalila. and uh, and then Lord Chaitanya was telling the story of Madhavanapuri, how, how Gopal uh, sent him to Puri, and on the way when he said Chiratura Gopinath, and he stopped at that temple. Anyway, it's a lot to, to, to say there, but. Uh, then after Lord Chaitanya said the story, he uh, describes it that he, su- he started sharing that verse, and chanting it and going into ecstasy from chanting it. And how this verse, you know, there was, was a lead up to the verse. This verse is the supreme uh, example of rasa, you know, poetry. And anyone who rub, it's just like a, 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 a sandalwood. The more you rub it, the more it fragrant it comes. The more you chant it, the more you... So here I am, you know, a couple of years in the movement, a proofreader. I said, ah, oh, i got to memorize this verse, you know. <laughs> I memorized the verse and I was chanting it everywhere. It's it's a it's 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 the the epitome of this mood of separation. Mm. It's sim- it's tip- it's similar in mood to the last two verses of the Shikshastika. Mm. You know, is that that ardent ardent appeal to Lord Krishna, and it's 
and I realized that you know from you know from reading that that part of the of the Mandalila, how that is the that is the real heart be heartbeat of this movement is the mood of separation the, the, the kirtans you know what Jane would chant in, in separation and, <coughs> and extreme you know this so much ecstatic uh, uh, talks between him and Ramananda Roy and that's as you say Madhavendra Puri and it says about this verse only three people could understand it Madhavendra Puri Lord Chaitanya and Radharani herself <laughs> could understand. It. Hare Krishna. Yeah, those those were the only three who experienced Mahabhav. Radharani, Madhavendra Puri, and Chaitanya Mahabhav. Those are the only three in personalities in existence that ever experienced Mahabhav. Yeah. Thank you, Prabhu. A wonderful class and nice verses. Thank you so much. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. So, Karshan, do you have something? I had two questions. One was... Um, was it? It was you talking about how Krishna gives you intelligence, and then so you could perform services. And so, my question is, uh, what if you're trying to utilize your intelligence in the service to Krishna, but you still have misconceptions, and so you have all these uh, kind of like weird ideas trying to spread Krishna consciousness? And how do you like overcome that? Like overcome your mind. In the service of well, it's not about overcoming your mind. You just, uh, if somebody's in a situation like that, they just have to read more. They have to study more. They have to hear more. If somebody has weird ideas, then then they have to overcome those weird ideas by hearing the right ideas. Um, that's all. I mean, that that's that's the role of the spiritual master. That's the role of Shiloh Prabhupada's books. That's why Shiloh Prabhupada said he wanted. It was just scrutinizingly study his books, not just... Well, there was once devotees were asking, or Srila Prabhupada asked the devotees, said, are you studying my books? And he, they said, yes, Srila Prabhupada, we're, we're reading your books every day. And then Srila Prabhupada said, no, are you studying my books? And he said, yeah, yeah, Srila Prabhupada, we're reading your books every day. He said, no, are you studying my books? So studying and reading are two different things. We can read the words on the page, but... Um, but yeah, in order for the for for the, the the message to actually enter into our heart, then we have to develop a very uh, sincere service attitude. Otherwise, we can talk so much. Like there's this Bengali uh, phrase, "Bora bora ban or bora bora pet Sri Long Lavate Mata Korehit," that we can that you, big Shri Prabhupada translated as "big big monkey, big big belly, Sri Lank jumping melancholy." That you can be a big big monkey with a big big belly, you know, and show off your big big belly to everybody. But then when it comes to actually doing something practical, then you're just like, mata korehit means like this, you know. So, uh, you know, we, we, can, we can talk, you know, day and night about pure devotional service and how we have to be pure and how we have to experience bhav and rasa and how we do But if we don't actually do anything practical without an actual like practical service attitude, then it's all just talk. It's just useless, completely useless. So... Um, so yeah, <clears throat> Krishna reveals things to those who are who are humble, who have a service attitude, um, and by engaging in in service and and service also has to be coupled with study. But um, then one can actually experience Krishna consciousness. Then one will actually, ex you know, the message will actually enter into one's heart. So yeah, it's one thing to be a philosopher; it's another thing to be. Uh, or a scholar, but it's another thing to be a to be a Vaishnava, to be a devotee. I had one more. It was just uh, what Krishna says in the Bhagavad Gita: one who comes near to him, one who performs services and becomes dear to him over time. I was thinking about it yesterday. It was like, why does, why would he let the lust kind of take over if he, if somebody's so dear to him? Like, how does he? call back the devotee before he falls down you're saying how does why why does krishna let us indulge our lusty desires or like why does why does krishna let us experience lust no like or the first one the first one you said why why does krishna let us indulge our lusty desires yeah we become so dear to him like we become dear to him over time by serving well, him. it's it's actually because because we're dear to him that krishna lets us do that he gives us the free, Krishna loves us and therefore he says, listen, like, 
I'm not going to stop you from doing what you want, if that's what you... I mean, the thing is, people who indulge lust, like people who are just like completely in Maya, who, who, who are at the whims of their mind, they get kicked by Maya a lot. Like they suffer a lot. And, 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 and Krishna says in Bhagavad Gita, many in many places, that lust equals suffering. In so many words, he says that. So, but Krishna doesn't want, he doesn't just want a bunch of robots to, to fold their hands and say, Hari Bol. Um, he wants actual love. He wants actual loving relationships with people. And um, so the condition, or the, the souls who, who have those relationships with him, need to voluntarily give that love in order for it to actually be love. And so if those souls don't want to voluntarily give their love to Krishna, then Krishna says, fine, go ahead. You can give your love somewhere else. Uh, but I'm warning you, it's not going to work. But anyway, if you want to do it, you can go. You, you know, I'm, I'm not holding you captive here. And so that's what happens. They go and then they suffer. And then if they're sufficiently intelligent, they realize that they're suffering. And um, they'll engage in devotional service. But, but even devotees, you know, even Krishna. Krishna is not obliged to anyone. It's not that, uh, that Krishna is obliged to keep us in Krishna consciousness. I mean, there's some devotees like, like for instance, with, with Hari Kesh Swami. Like Hari Kesh Swami, like, he did so much service for the movement. Like an insane amount of service for the movement. He was a guru. He had so many disciples in Europe. I mean, Europe just like, the book distribution in Europe was just like going crazy. Just like, so many books were being distributed under Hare Krishna Swami. Yeah, and printing in all these languages, everything. Hare Krishna Swami did so much service for Srila Prabhupada, but he left Krishna consciousness. It's not 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 just not he didn't just fall down. He didn't just you know uh, give up his sannyas. Or the, he left Krishna consciousness at like the his peak, you know, the peak of his career, so to speak. You know, just we're not, just left just rejected Srila Prabhupada and, and, and left Krishna consciousness. So Krishna is not obliged to keep us in Krishna consciousness. Again, uh, Krishna consciousness is given to those whom Krishna chooses. But we have to show Krishna that we want it. If we're maintaining lusty desires and we're not using our intelligence to, to curb those lusty desires, then Krishna says, fine, this guy doesn't want it that much. Um, so we have to really want it. That's why Durgam Padas Tatkava Yobadanti. That's why the that's why intelligent people say it's a very difficult path. Because it is in many ways. It's it's it is and it isn't. It's simple. Uh, like Srila Prabhupada said, for the simple. If somebody's simple, if somebody's just willing to, you know, accept and surrender and serve Krishna and not have any other desires, then it's very easy. Krishna is very easy. But most people aren't like that, so that's why it's difficult. Because that conditioning is there to try to enjoy the material world. So, uh, yeah, Krishna won't stop us if that's what we want to do, but uh, <clears throat> yeah, therefore we're enjoined to not want to do that. <laughs> Krishna just says, don't, don't want that. <laughs> don't desire that. And if, and if, and if one is properly is properly engaged in Krishna consciousness, if one's really sincere in Krishna consciousness, then, then he won't want that. Krishna consciousness, again, like I said, Krishna consciousness has the ability to purify anything and anyone. And just look at Jagai and Madhai. So, uh, yeah, so if one's sincere in Krishna consciousness, chanting especially, chanting is our armor, sincere chanting, that's our armor against Maya. If we can do that, then then we're safe and we don't have to worry about it. It's only when we when we deviate from the path of Krishna consciousness that, that we have to worry about falling down. But otherwise, you don't have to worry about it. We just have to engage the mind in the service of Krishna, and then we don't have to think about anything else. So, we are trying to Thank you for the class. You mentioned that um, a guru reveals his transcendental knowledge, and the uh, question is, uh, it uh, should be how to say, in Diksha Guru or Shiksha Guru and also in, in personal way or something like eternal. Well, Diksha Guru, Diksha Guru is necessary, but Shiksha Guru is also necessary. 
Srila Prabhupada in one purport in the fourth canto says, usually the Shikshra Guru later becomes the Dikshra Guru, but it's not always the case. Many of Srila Prabhupada, my spiritual master included, my spiritual master only saw Srila Prabhupada twice. I, I don't think he, he never spoke a word of Srila Prabhupada, my spiritual master. So many devotees, you know, say, had the same experience with Srila Prabhupada. Um, actually, no, my Guru Maharaj did speak to Srila Prabhupada once during his second initiation. Um, so, yeah, Diksha Guru might be the Shiksha Guru also, but our, ours is a Shiksha Parampara mainly. Um, that, that's because Shiksha is the, the essence of Diksha. Diksha means what? Diksha means when, when Divya Gyan is given, when transcendental knowledge is given. So transcendental knowledge can be given by initiation, but, but mainly transcendental knowledge is given by, by instruction. So we need Shiksha Gurus, um, a, at least a Shiksha Guru. Um, like Srila Prabhupada said, you need somebody there to pull your ear. So bo both are required. Um, the spiritual master, and you asked, is it like a practical thing or is it just like a spiritual kind of ethereal thing? It's both. It can be both. Um, by, by, by pleasing the spiritual master, it uh, doesn't have to be like serving, you know, um, like cooking for the spiritual master and this and that. By serving the spiritual master's instructions, for instance, the spiritual master says distribute books. If one distributes books um, sincerely, then um, the spiritual master can be pleased. You know, the spiritual master is not an ordinary person. So the pleasure of the spiritual master is not based on uh, or, or bound by time and space. You could say your service to the spiritual master is not bound by time and space. In the sense that um, it doesn't matter if the spiritual master is still on the planet or, or has left, or if he's close or far away. If one serves the instructions of the spiritual master, then, then the spiritual master becomes pleased and Krishna becomes pleased. And so <clears throat> transcendental knowledge can be revealed in his heart in that way. So is that okay? Hare Krishna. Anything more online? Okay, Rantarad Shriman Pagavatam Ki Jai.